Greetings from the Eccentric Man, and in this uh, video what I'm going to be looking at is the Warlord GT in greater detail. As you know from the little video that we did on our road trip, uh, four of us set off and we met Lloyd, our fifth member, when we were up at uh, Nottingham. He was staying at the same hotel, so that was really good. So let's have a look at the armies. So Rob's army was uh, based around three captured Stugs which had been converted into the 76 SU-76Is, fully enclosed uh, tanks with the 76 ZIS gun. So medium anti-tank, uh, so a Katushka and a Quad Maxim. So he was running a tank platoon and an infantry platoon. Um, key seemed to be a key thing over the, uh, the weekend. Those armies seemed to do uh, better than uh, all the others. Uh, but we'll have a look and see what the winning armies were. So this is Rob's list. Um, I'll leave the army list so you can have a little nose, you can stop it, and you can have a look through it at your uh, pleasure. So next up is John's list, and that's his Faustium Jaegers. Uh, and this was based on uh, an army in Sicily. Uh, he's taking all the uh, veterans, and it's around the Plim... Plimsoll Bridge, and uh, it's when the Falsam Jaegers fought the British Paras, and that's what we're looking at doing a campaign, John and myself, with these uh, two armies, my British Paras and his Falsam Jaegers. We've had one battle already. So John's uh, army, all veteran, uh, has got a Marder, a motorcycle as his armoured car, and uh, mortar, light anti-tank, light uh, an anti-tank rifle, sniper team, uh, so, yeah, a nice little army, uh, quite hard, quite stubborn, as paras paratroopers are. Uh, he's hoping to do much better in this uh, event than he did in his last one, where he didn't do particularly well, but uh, you never know what happens in bolt action, and uh, he was taking these to see how they worked out. So, next up is Colin and his French. Uh, you've probably seen me playing against these ones as well. This is a, a tank platoon and a reinforced platoon as well. Uh, he's got the Shandy ones and the FT-17s. Uh, some inexperienced infantry and Algerians. And this was a force that was uh, set up on a particular day in France, 17th of something or other, June 1940, where the French army was trying to save the... Um, endangered Algerians uh, to uh, try and keep them safe uh, so that was Colin's army and we've played it before it's got a number of uh, single turret single man turrets uh, which does cause a little bit of trouble but he, he tends to take a more senior leader to give him that extra leadership test so let's have a look at Lloyd's army something different so, Lloyd was uh, taking something different, and it's different it was. This is a Brazilian army, uh, based around 1945. <coughs> and you can see uh, what he's got there. He's got inexperienced infantry. He's got the anti-tank um, vehicle at the top. I think it's an M10. Could even be a Hellcat. Uh, a couple of trucks and uh, little dodgers, and an artillery piece. But what he has got which you can't see, but you can just see the base, is a rather nice 148 P47. And he was going to take the forward air observer, because the Brazilian list is uh, more or less based on the American list, because they were trained up by the Americans uh, with American equipment. Um, so he decided to take the P47, and a cracking little job he's done on it. So, last up is my East African Ball of Fire list. And yet, I uh, decided to go with what I had. Uh, one reinforced platoon, I said I was going to take it, uh, and so I did. I didn't start playing around with any of the uh, other selectors, like putting in three Stuarts, or taking the Western Desert and getting the free infantry unit. I just went with the East African unit army that I've been using over the last few battle reports. And... Um, I've done okay in the, the games that I've played with it. Uh, still having to try to get uh, used to this army. But uh, at least I've had a few games with it. 
So, uh, a little uh, quick run through of a couple of pictures of the army as it is. For those who haven't seen it before, uh, I'm taking a second lieutenant, a sniper team, a anti-tank rifle team, those two are regulars. Uh, I'm taking a commander unit of five men, which are veteran, taking eight Gurkhas, which are veteran, two infantry units, regular, with uh, eight men and an MG. I got a 25 pounder, a Matilda, a Lanchester armoured car, and a truck and a universal carrier. And uh, of course, the free artillery observer. So, uh, and that was my list. Uh, all done with the Warlord 8th Army box set, all the infantry. Uh, with the inclusion of the Rubicon CMP truck at the back. But all the rest, Warlord games. So, I asked the organisers how many people we had, and they said officially 80, unofficially 84, uh, because they had a list first thing on the Saturday morning, and four people turned up who wasn't on the list that they had been given from uh, Warlord Games. Uh, but there was a little bit of a theme over the weekend, and um, but they did have emails saying that they had bought their tickets. So we're thinking around about we thought they'd start the tournament off with 80 people players so let's have a look at the tables that were set up uh 40 odd tables uh is quite a lot to put up and fill so day two and we're uh, looking at uh, what games we're playing and who we're playing oh that was a bit out of focus so some of the tables that we've got all laid out Some of the jungle ones are a little sparse. So, looking at a few more. That's a nice rocket in the middle. Yeah. So, a few farm and rural ones. Back on to there. Uh, trains in the middle. Some snow tables. Do like their trains. So a few themes as you can see. There's uh, tables are laid out: jungles and deserts. The number of the tables is uh, a bit of a pain because they're not consecutively set up. They've just got random numbers all over the place. It must help with them work with something, but um, it's a bit of a pain when it's a full house and people are trying to find out what games they're playing. So we've got uh, our uh, Mediterranean tables. More snowy tables. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look there, Phil. So more tables in here. Oop. One spare. Another one there. One of Sam Down Orders tables that you brought along. Very nice little one. Uh, some nice buildings printed by uh, Colin Betts, one of the uh, event organisers. So, more deserty. Nice town one. And then running in. Nice little uh, tank vignette, if people uh, have seen the photograph on. Uh, on the computers from uh, Japan. Well, the islands anyway. So, yeah, nice factory. And then the last table. 
So, yeah. So, my first game was against Bo. I'm playing his Australians, and we were playing Demolition. Uh, quite a nasty little army if you're playing Demolition. Uh, doesn't look very mobile uh, because he's just got the Matilda. However, there's uh, Papua New Guinea native in infantry and the Australians there. Uh, and the rules of Australians are, and the Papua New Guinea, is, is there's quite a bit of forward deploying. So um, with his army he was able to put quite a few up near onto the halfway line. And considering demolition is you've just got to get a unit into base contact with the objective, that uh, can be quite tricky. I put my units, I put a couple of units in trucks on outflank to try and rushing off the left hand side. Bit of a problem at the beginning. Uh, I didn't have an opponent, and the labelling of the tables, as I've mentioned, was absolutely a nightmare. It was uh, there was no consecutive numbers. Uh, it was just all over the shop. Trying to find the number of your table was very difficult. So we didn't get started for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes while we were messing around trying to get opponents uh, and uh, to set up the game. So unfortunately we did end uh, on turn 4, uh, which was a bit of a shame really. Um, but it was a draw. Uh, I couldn't get to the objective and Bo couldn't get to uh, my objective to uh, to get the win. So we ended up with a draw. So a draw for the first game. Game two playing Mishka and his Hungarians. And uh, we're playing Envelopment. And I shall be uh, the attacker in this one. Mishka setting up his uh, forces to defend. Playing a uh, tank platoon. -ish. And an infantry uh, platoon I should imagine. So we've got the list so we can go through it to, uh, at the end of the video. Very nice list, I did take a close up picture of it so uh, we'll see how we go. So as you can see Mishka brought a tank platoon and an infantry platoon uh, and uh, this seemed to be the uh, the, the flavour of the weekend and uh, they worked very well together. Envelopment, uh, me as the attacker, very tricky, uh, running forward and just killed by the tanks really. Um, and the uh, the artillery so there's two medium howitzers and you've got three light anti-tank guns and you've got i think the anti-tank rifles on the little armed cars but they've got machine guns as well uh, so i did get a bit duffed but also the problem on the table and we didn't realize until the end is that the tables were actually uh some of them were five foot wide uh and some of them the, the cloth was cut to 54 inches uh, which doesn't help if you're playing uh, envelopment or anyone's where you have to set up from the side. So unfortunately in this game uh, I got a uh, a loss. Uh, I, I couldn't get enough points uh, to uh, to beat Mishka, uh, but he was a very nice uh, very nice chap and a good opponent. So on to the next one, game three, playing somebody from YouTube. So, game three, we're playing Robert, who is uh, the Bretonian Knight, Bretonian Knight from the uh, from YouTube, and uh, we will, we said we would be like to play each other, and uh, we got a game. So this is the third game. We're both on one win, no one draw. One draw. We're both on one draw and a loss because I lost the second game to the Hungarians. So uh, we're playing manhunt on here. I'm going to be the defender. Robert's got his uh, Irish guards, so uh, it's going to be really interesting. So we're going to uh, set up ready for turn one. Yeah, so a really good game with Robert uh, on this manhunt. I managed to keep my officer alive just. Um, uh, manhunt, he needs to be captured. A uh, couple of really uh, funny bits in it. Well, I thought it was funny, but uh, probably not so good for Robert in that. He, uh, he drove his half track with a heavy machine gun right up next to my truck. Tried to kill it, didn't. Uh, I drove away, and then his uh, Piat man jumped out, take a shot at my Matilda from an inch away, and sadly he rolled a one uh, to do damage. Um, so I managed to escape scot-free. However, a really a really fraught moment when his Daimler Dingo armoured car with his uh, Michael Caine uh, in the top uh, came out from cover, came round, 
took a shot at my officer who was in cover and down and nearly killed them. <laughs> Four shots and he did get hit. Uh, it was uh, rather worrying, but uh, and that was sort of the uh, one but last turn, penultimate turn, and I think he could have got a draw out of it, but unfortunately he just missed it, which was a real shame. But again, uh, this was a really fun game playing Rob, uh, a great opponent. Next up is Heights from Spain, and he was playing a Japanese army. I've played quite a few Japanese armies because uh, Colin uh, has them, so I'm uh, used to what what they are and what they do. So let's have a look. Greetings from the eccentric man, this is Heights. Heights, and we're playing Japanese army, and we're playing sectors today. Uh, and we're going to roll off to see who gets what side. And it'll be uh, game one of day two. Heights' army was uh, mostly all veteran infantry, as you can see there. Uh, all paratroopers, uh, and he had a few anti-tank guys running around the old fanatics. Uh, so, yep, got a good game. Trying to get your models into the uh, opposite sectors and into the one which was your opponent's starting uh, zone. A slight sour taste uh, in this game, not necessarily from Heights uh, and the way he played, but the ruling by the uh, the TOs. Uh, it came down to two minutes from the end of the time for the whole game, and we had just finished a turn, and at that stage I was winning. Uh, the tournament organiser said, no, play to play the dices till the till the game ends, which was two minutes. So first three dice out of the bag went to the Japanese, uh, and I lost, which was uh, a little bit annoying because in the tournaments that I run, uh, I say you've got 15 minutes left. If you can't fit another turn in, stop, uh, because then that's fair. Everyone's had a turn, uh, and you're not at the whim of the dice bag for the win or the lose. So a little bit annoying, not because of the opponent, but because of the way that the end of the ter end of the game was uh, sorted out. But it was a good game. I uh, did enjoy it. Uh, trying to uh, get across the table into the opponent's sectors and trying to take out a few of the infantry and the units uh, has a bit of luck uh, in some of the some of the stages and not so good luck in some of the other bits. So. That was it, another a loss for the uh, the first game in the morning of the Sunday. So, going into the last game of the GT with one win, one draw, and two losses. Which is a bit of a shame, really. Uh, but never mind, playing Alistair up next with his Battle of the Bulge Germans. This is Alistair, we're playing uh, the last game at uh, Warlord GT. Alistair has got his Germans Battle of the Bulge, which uh, you've seen a picture of them up close. So that's uh, very nicely done. Uh, so we're uh, running that, running it on a desert table against my uh, East African and we're playing double envelopment on this table. It should be a 6x4 but in fact this one is actually 5 foot uh, so we have uh, decided what we're going to do. But we're going to run into uh, our first turn very shortly. So see you later. For a double envelopment and we're going round. I said set his uh, units up, there's a, there's a Panzer IV so I'm going to have to be remembering Tiger Fear. Uh, set up the Matilda so we'll have a little bit of a tank off at the beginning. Not hopeful there. Snipers were snipering off and uh, we're going to go into turn one. Excellent game against Alistair for this last game. He uh, pipped it 27-24 for points. So he, uh, he takes a win, but he only got the win because we went into the seventh round on the random round, and round roll. Uh, otherwise it would have been a win to me, but that's, that's how bolt action runs. But a uh, thoroughly enjoyable game. So uh, managed to get these off the board. And these in the opponent's deployment zone. Alistair got these off the table and got the, uh, the truck just up there. So last turn, the truck and the uh, infantry unit up into the deployment zone. And he got the Panzer four and the officer off in that uh, turn seven. So yeah, excellent game to finish the day on. So, finish the tournament. Uh, on a win, a draw, and three losses. If luck had been on my side, uh, I could have finished with three wins, one draw, and a loss. But never mind, that's, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. So what we've got here is uh, a picture of Alistair's army, 
uh, and it is rather nice. I did like it. It was uh, very nicely painted uh, for the winter theme, and uh, and it was uh, it was pretty good army. Uh, unusual to uh, to have that, and was probably one of about the only Panzer fours that was there. So let's have a look at these armies as we go through, and then I'll give my thoughts on the on the GT. So this is the winning army. It's a Finnish army, and it was uh, run by Dan from the Juggernaut podcast and Facebook page, and one of the Leicester guys. They are very competitive gamers. Come from 40k uh, and carry that over into bolt action. So he took the top spot. Second spot, another guy, uh, Topher, from the Juggernauts and the Leicester Club. And again, uh, built to win, that you can see here. Two howitz, heavy howitzers, two katushkas, uh, and the infantry. Um, yep. Uh, inexperienced fanatic. Well, no, I'm not sure whether it was fanatic, but it probably was. Only got the flag down there for the Soviets. Stalingrad list. Uh, the worst list in the books. One of the worst list lists in the books, sadly. Uh, so the next one up is, uh, I think it's Jan from 040. The, uh, the German guys who do the battle reports, and this is his British Armoured Brigade. And he came third with it, so he did very well. So, yeah. Again, as you can see, uh, another tank and reinforced infantry platoon. I think, or it can, yeah, 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 I think that's, that's how it is. That's how that one runs. So, yeah, that's, uh, that was Jan's. Um, and he did well to come third there. So, as we go through and just look at some of the armies that were also uh, at the event, what do I think of Warlord GT? Well, I can't say I would rush to go back to it. The, the tickets went on sale over a year ago. The event pack came out very late. I know that they, were, they did approach other people to to put it on and then sat on the pack for a while and then it came out three weeks before the event, three or four weeks before the event, which is, is really poor really. Uh, if you think it's their showcase event, bolt action, tournament, grand tournament, uh, and it, to a degree, it was as if they didn't really, or weren't really bothered. There was very little uh, hype in the, the hall. There was no, like, banners for war, for Warlord game or bolt action, uh, considering it's above their <coughs> their premises in the Marcus Garvey Hall. There, there wasn't very much at all. The table set up in the room, uh, the numbering... I'm not sure whether that was down to having to work with the computer system that the tournament organisers were using, but it was all over the show. Uh, you had nearly 80 people wandering around with their armies on trays in their hands, trying to get past one another, <coughs> trying to find table numbers which were all over the place. Uh, really poor. Uh, not good. Which brings us on to the tables. There were some sparse ones, but most of them were, were okay. So for playing on, yep, fine. With the exception of the tables were too wide. They were five foot wide. Didn't Nobody, nobody was told this. Uh, it was like, oh, that's a really wide table. And you're probably halfway through the game. And if you're thinking about you're playing uh, sectors or you're playing envelopment or you're playing demolition all of those you normally play on a six foot four board so it's it's skewing the game already a gt tournament so let's have a look we're playing all the you could play all of uh, or any of the scenario rules uh, scenarios from the rule book 12 different games they are all weighted differently. They're not evenly balanced. So I could play certain ones and somebody else could play certain ones. And it's not a real fair test against each other 
because you're not playing the same scenarios. So I think for a proper grand, grand, grand tournament, everyone should be playing the same scenario in that particular turn, which is annoying. I do like playing different scenarios, and ones you don't get to play very often, but everyone should be playing the same scenario. So that, that was another issue for me. So we were also told on uh, at the end of day one to leave your armies set out and they will be photographed. Uh, and then wherever they appear, they appear. There was a painting uh, award for best painted and uh, that did go to a rather nice painted army that uh, we got notified on the Sunday. However, Sunday morning, the armies weren't paint the armies weren't photographed at the end of the day. So we then had to mess around between game four and five, setting the armies up again to have the photographs taken. Uh, which was a bit irritating, really, having to mess around with that. Uh, and again, what I understand was that uh, the photographer hadn't been arranged. Uh, and it goes, it just goes with the tournament. It was as if Warlord couldn't have been bothered with it. And it didn't look as if the organisers the tournament organisers, were getting very much support from Warlord Games during the two days. <sighs> yeah. Did Warlord Games make it a great event? A spectacle? Their flagship game? No. The only thing that made it for me was the opponent's that I played and fortunately I didn't play any of the heavy competitive gamers because if I had uh, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed the weekend at all so yeah bit uh, bit disappointing really with the GT the way it was run the way it was organized uh, they really could do better what a wasted opportunity, um, I thought. But other people may have uh, had a different experience, but uh, I can only sort of give it from my perspective, uh, having been to different events and different tournaments in the UK uh, for Warhammer Fantasy and for 40k. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't really great which is sad to say really um, so I think we probably won't be going next year However, I also thought that uh, prize support was very poor for this event uh, you had the top three places getting uh, a voucher I think possibly the wooden spoon did and probably the best painted uh, when you consider there was nearly 80 people paying £30 uh, a ticket uh, very poor price support and not even a discount offered on Bolt Action or whatever uh, Warlord Games in their shop uh, I think they could have done that you had 80 people there who probably would have spent quite Quite a bit, I would think, and probably more than they would normally have done if there was a discount for the day or a discount code. But no, uh, they didn't do it. Nothing there. And, that, and that's what makes me think, did they really have their heart in this? Did they really plan it? Did they really work out what they wanted to do with it? Where they wanted to go? The, the guys in North America seem so much more switched on for what they're trying to do, how they're trying to grow the game. Uh, so much different than the UK team. It did reinforce really my thoughts and about the army selection of a reinforced platoon and a tank platoon being able to be played together. Those were the armies that did much better. Um, and 
you get best of everything. You're getting tanks, but you're not taking the t penalty really for the infantry issue. Uh, and you can build up an armor, take lots of infantry, and that's there. I don't necessarily uh, believe that tournaments should be run with that loadout. It should either be reinforced infantry platoons on their own, and then do a tank platoon war, uh, or run two reinforced platoons, infantry, and a tank platoon. Not two tank platoons, a tank platoon. Uh, I just find that is too overpowering for the game uh, that I see and I like as bolt action. Just my thought, but uh, talking to lots of people during the, uh, the event, that was their views as well. So it'd be interesting to see what the, uh, the North American pack comes out as to see how they address that, that issue. But anyway, let's have a look and try and finish on a positive note and look at the placings for our five people that went. So, at the top of our uh, pile, we had Rob and his German, uh, his Soviets, or German Stug, captured by the Soviets. Rob came 6th, Colin with his French came 17th, John with his Faustium Jaegers came in 42nd, a good result for John, and he got some good wins. Me, I came in at 55, and Lloyd came in at 65. I think Lloyd's result was a reflection of his aeroplane, which unfortunately and sadly killed him an awful lot in the uh, event. Anyway, that's the placings that we did, so well done to Rob and Colin and John and Lloyd for uh, sticking in there. So, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, didn't get too down with my thoughts about how the uh, the GT ran. Uh, hopefully they'll sort all those out for next year, but as I say, I don't think we'll be going along. So, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and share with your friends, and hoping to get a battle up at some stage. See you soon.